One of the reasons why I really love this episode is because it's about it's in some ways about letting things go, uh, which is why you, you, Ned's concerned that uh, Lance is not let go of Debbie, but you know, in reality, um, I mean, what would you say? Well, this is this is more of us struggling with the Deb character. And yeah, how do we get rid of this this crazy, crazy woman? Yeah, it, again, one of the other things that it took us time to realize was that all of the other characters are ancillary, in my opinion. Sure. The show is about these two guys, and I think that we felt like we needed to mention what was happening before, you know, these relationships that they're having with other characters outside of the show, and like, well, we need to show them, we need to talk about them, but the truth is, Really, the show sings. The show is at its strongest when it's these two guys having genuine moments with each other and making each other laugh. And we get to see a lot of that in this episode. Yeah, I, I, I like that Lance is beginning to come out of his shell and grow up a little bit here. He's, he, he's dealt with the, the burden of truth, which is the first four episodes of, 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 of trying to find honesty in his life. And in this one, I think... Humility is the lesson for Lance in this one, that, and he has to admit to himself that he's not really quite over Deb, and that's sort of his internal problem here. Um, I think this might be our greatest thievery. Our greatest this production achievement is the theft of... The in and out parking lot. Yeah. Which uh, is... Amazing. One of the busiest parking lots in Hollywood on a Friday, Saturday. And a Thursday, I guess. That's a big <laughs> night for them, too. Yeah. Uh, so we have uh, our... I mean, you could just see the traffic coming in and out of that place. It's wonderful. And all... This is tricky. So, you know, we, we, uh, I, the, one of the things I wanted to find a balance between in <laughs> Milkshake was the then, balance between cutting between characters and a long two shot. So this yeah. is a, a clearly this is a very long two shot balance between minor, minor coverage. And part of that was because we're stealing a location and we needed to... It, it, you know, if anything, we had a master shot. So we did everything in a master first, and then we would move into close-ups close if we could actually get it. Yeah. And to the credit of the night, very gentlemanly security guard. The night, yeah, night, the night security we shooting, guy. He kicked this out in a very kind and well, I think it helped. honorably fashion. Honorably I think it helped fashion. that we ate there. We, we spent a shitload of money eating burgers and fries and shakes there. Yeah. But he just was, he was... He said, look, you guys have been here for a while. Yeah. Which was knew, true. We were there for probably two or three hours shooting. And uh, because we moved into coverage eventually, which is what you'll see coming up here. But those glasses, man, as soon as we turned the glasses on, we knew that, you know, Eric Garcetti and Vio Ragosa were going to come and shut yeah. us down. Now we've got a show. Yeah. Now we've got a show. So here we're talking about, what are we talking about here? We're talking about one plus one equals pussy. Like, he's got to go to this party. That was a, a beautiful improv line by Ned. Yeah. Just, I, that wasn't on the page. Uh, and then we finally got to the second master, I guess, here. He this the two shot of, you know, if we needed any coverage, it was going to be this two shot. We finally got a little bit of coverage. And the introduction of the white Prius. And Sean, amazing. And who's that? That's me. That's yeah. me making my, my debut. Yeah. Uh, in my silver Mazda, which I think I referred to throughout the script as a sick-ass silver Mazda, because I know <laughs> yeah, we were going to be using my car. <laughs> right, and so now we have the, the introduction of the hipsters who feel like they own the road because they drive the environmentally friendly vehicle. But we also have Lance, who's trying to break out of his mold of, his, of fear right. and dependency. He's, he feels encouraged to be a bigger man than he really is. You know, he's kind of pretending to be something he isn't. Now, th this stuff of them driving around town, these, fo these follow shots, these are several miles away from the, the in and out right? This y is the... Yeah, this is near Arclight, and then uh, now we're back at Palladium, which is even further away than the follow shots we were just doing. So this is the Palladium. We're in and out which is at La Brea. This is at past, East Pass Vine. Now, if I could just say something real quick about how happy I was that we were shoot that you shot those follow shops from the top of the parking structure at the Arc Light. Why? That's just one of my favorite places in LA. The Arc Light or the top of the parking structure. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. There are better views in LA, but I just have a lot of great memories of parking up there, kind of taking in the city and being like, wow, I can't believe I'm here. 
and then going to see a great movie. But you, you moved to Los Angeles. You know, I, I, I moved from a small town and I marked it to Redlands and Victorville, respectively. And you come to you come to Los Angeles, and there's a lot of people who who shit on it and dog it. And I don't know. I feel the same way that Mark does. You park on this huge city, or sorry, you park on this parking structure at the top floor, and you look out, and there's downtown. You're in the center of Hollywood. You look, yeah, you look to the left, and you can see downtown. You look to the right, you can see all the way out to Santa Monica, and sometimes you can see out to the water right. from up there. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the Hollywood Hills behind you, and you just have a beautiful view of the city, and it, you can't help but fall in love with it. And then you get to go in and see a great movie. Right, you're about to go into the Cinerama Dome from it's been around for 50 years, yeah, or give or take, and to watch The Shining. Yeah, <laughs> on 35 millimeter print. Yeah, uh, and you know, before and after, you'll go get some amazing food. It's a wonderful experience, and I, that's that's half the reason why we wanted to show a lot of LA. To, you know, as much as LA as we could yeah. uh, in Milkshake is because we. We really love living here. You know, we fought a lot uh, to stay here, not even make it here, but just to stay in Los Angeles is not an easy task. And so we, we wanted to celebrate that a little bit with milkshakes.